Dinner and a Book is supported by the Rex and Alice A. Martin Foundation of Elkhart, celebrating the spirit of Alice Martin and her love of good food and good friends. In researching Picasso's many years of living on the Côte d'Azur on the Mediterranean, the author discovered a true but little-known fact. In 1936, Picasso's life in Paris was in such utter turmoil that he actually stopped painting. For Picasso, his personal life and his professional life were indelibly intertwined. Let's meet my guest Tuck Langland to shed some more light on this mega artist and welcome. Well, I'm delighted to be here, Gail, as always. Well, I'm glad to have you. As it's, always. It's a perfect book because you're an artist and we're yes. studying an artist. And, and we're, we both love France. And we love French food. We hate French food. No, oh, we love we French food. <laughs> Well, we're going to, well, before we get started, uh, I just want to ask, well, let's, let's talk about the food before I ask you the first question. What are you going to be making? I'm going to start, I'm going to make an amuse-bouche, and I'll explain a little bit later what that is, and then I'm going to make bouillabaisse, which is a, a fish stew. It's the kind of national dish of the south of France. Great. And I'm going to do a poulet provençal, that is a provincial chicken, a chicken in the south of France. And then I'm going to, let's see, what else am I going to do? Cut some uh, bread, some French bread, then we'll have some cheese and grapes for dessert. And so let's get started, but before we really get started, what, why did Picasso leave Paris? What was going on in his, in his life? Well, the book doesn't actually talk too much about that, but it was basically a mess. Picasso, as everybody knows, had hot and cold running women in his life, always, <laughs> mostly hot. And he, uh, he was a very, very famous man. It's the old story of, you know, would you really want to be Elvis where you couldn't walk down the street without mobs following you? You know, you couldn't do what you and I do, just go out to a store and buy something. Right. And so Picasso was very famous and he wanted to just get away. Well, I don't he, know what else is going on. Well, I'll tell you what was going on. He was married to Olga, the Russian ballerina. Mm -hmm. And he had a mistress named Marie Therese. Therese, yes. And she was going to have a baby. And there was squabbling. There was fighting between the women, between Picasso. This was a theme in his life. He loved it. He loved, I think he loved getting the women upset. He, I, I think he did. He did, and he was cruel. Well, I think them. he wanted to prove that he was the boss. Constantly I prove guess. that he was the boss. And women, he almost said as much, women are here to serve me. Well. So he's not the kind of guy that most of today's uh, aware women would really approve of. Well, I'll tell you the kind of woman I think appealed to him, or he appealed to them, was, maybe I said that twice, um, the only really strong woman was Francoise Gillot. Yeah. And she refused to marry him. She had two children with him. And she went on to have her own famous life. She, did. she married Jonas Salk. And she said, every, every strong, intelligent man wants to have a strong, intelligent woman. Francoise Gillot was that woman. And you're doing your butter here, and I am going to start with some chicken. I'm going to, um, and I hope this doesn't start splattering like crazy. These, um, when you talk, you have to watch, too. So I'm going to be cooking the chicken three minutes on each side. We'll do some um, shifts here. And then I'll add herbs and spices, and uh, I'll be adding some mushrooms, capers, black olives, kalamata olives. And um, so you're doing your bread here. Tell I'm us doing, what, what I'm doing is I'm making an amuse bouche, and I, I'm going to explain what that is. It means in French, amuse your mouth. It's a little tiny pre-appetizer appetizer. And I, I like to describe it this way. It's not on the menu, and it's not on the bill. It's rather like getting nacho chips in a Mexican restaurant. Yeah, it's well. Just, but the variety is unlimited, and chefs can go crazy with doing things. So what I'm doing here is I've, I've made four rather thin slices of a French baguette. And I have my tweezers to turn them over, you see. And yes. I will put on them 
some aioli, which is mayonnaise with an extra kick of garlic, uh, garlic and yeah. uh, uh, mustard, which also goes with the bouillabaisse. And I'm going to put on it some, um, what do you call it, smoked salmon and a little caviar. Oh, that should be quite amusing. We don't go to Iran to buy $1,000 an ounce caviar. You go we to Barnes don't? Or, no. <laughs> oh, I always... I, they don't, they don't, do. They don't give me landing priority for my <laughs> private jet. I see. That's why I don't go there. I see. <laughs> well, yeah. I think what I'm going to do is put all this chicken in, and then we'll time it for three minutes. We'll turn it over. Then I'm going to put it in the oven to stay warm while I make the sauce. So... All right, we know why he's left. There's a lot of fighting going on in Paris. He goes down to France. He doesn't want anybody to know he's there. He goes in the spring, the last tourist. He touristy. calls himself Monsieur Ruiz. Yes. R-U-I-Z. That's his father's name. That's right. He was Spanish. Uh -huh. and, um, and so he used a, a, that name, an incognito name. And his mother's name was Picasso. Her mm -hmm. Yeah, last oh name. yeah, he took, took his mother's name, yeah. So... We have this flamboyant, intelligent genius, and uh, Odine is 17 years old. Her parents own a, a little restaurant in Juan de Pain, and it's called the, the Café Paradis. Paradise. And they, they cook for, they have breakfast, people come in for breakfast, but it's a traditional old style. They aren't having scrambled eggs and all that. Well, it's a fa fabulous restaurant. And, and she yeah. and her husband are wonderful cooks, and they teach Odine to cook. That's a crucial point. It's she very important. Cook. She learns to cook. And, and cook one very day, well. a man comes down to the restaurant and says, I would like someone to come and cook my lunch every day, or bring a lunch every day, and or, you know, he'll say if he's going to have lunch a certain day. So Ondine is chosen, of course, she's the only one that could ride her bicycle with a big pannier or basket mm -hmm. of food up to the chateau. That Excuse me. Picasso has rented for the season, and he just is incognito. Uh, but there's partying going on on the on the uh, in the area there. We meet a lot of kind of fussy aristocrats, and um, but Ondine goes up there every day. She's intrigued by him. She's very careful not to get in his way. And of course, what happens? Well, she gets closer and closer to him. After a while, she's modeling for him. And yeah. she's in the restaurant. They have a print of a Rembrandt painting, Girl at a Window, that many, many viewers probably know. Uh, a very famous uh, Rembrandt. And so she says, could you do me at the window? So he does. He paints her at the window. See, just and then ask that painting, Picasso, right? Just that, ask him to do yeah. the painting. Yeah, and that painting is the thread to the whole book. It definitely is. That's the main thing, yeah. And the author uses this period. She knows this painting probably has never been painted. Yeah. She doesn't, but she's got this moment in time that she can create a story about Picasso and a young woman. Um, so we, we spend time. He's, she's there. Of course, one thing leads to another. And before you know it... She's pregnant. Be, that's the other. That's the other. <laughs> Yes, and of course, this is 1936. This is not something you do in a small town in France. This is, the, if the family knew, they probably would banish her. They want her to marry a Mr. Monsieur Renard, which in, in translated means Mr. Fox. Fox, Mr. Fox. And he's not a very pleasant, nice man, but they need money. They want her to marry him. And uh, so what we find is that in order to escape this mess, what does she do? She finally finds her long lost fiance, who was in the, in the merchant marine. She wrote to him every day for a couple, three years. He never wrote back. And then she discovered letters, all the letters she had written to him, her mother had stowed away and never mailed them. And all the letters he wrote to her, her mother had stowed away, because she didn't want her to marry that guy. Well, he was, he didn't have prospects, and she thought Monsieur Renard would have make everything perfect. Yeah. Uh, so she gives up on Luc, and then uh, after all this, she's kind of upset, and she sees this scruffy man walking down the street, and it turns out to be Luc. He's That's been right. gone years. He's back. And so they decide they're going to leave France and go to the New World. They're going to go to what city? 
It's New Rochelle, France. Uh, New York. Uh, New York. It's on yeah. the uh, coast of Long Island. New Rochelle. Or it's either, uh, yeah, it's, I think it's on the coast of Long Island. Now, what I'm doing here, just to let you know, I have yeah. just chopped up an onion and a leek. And right. Put them in the pan with some butter. I'm going to add some tomatoes, and then I'm going to add seafood stock. Now, the recipes for bouillabaisse, if you read those recipes, they tell you you can't do it. You have to live in Marseille. You have to use 50 different kinds of fish. They got to be the little fish that the fishermen come in with and that they don't want anyway. They only sell the big ones and blah, blah, blah. And everybody along the south coast of France has a different recipe for, for bouillabaisse. And everyone's recipe is the only perfect recipe, etc. So et yeah. I've been making it differently. <laughs> You've been trying different versions, right? I've been right? trying different versions. I'm putting these vegetables in the butter. I'm going to add a little bit of chopped tomato. You know, they tell you to take a tomato and parboil it and peel it and de-seed it. Oh, yeah, buy yeah. those cans. Just buy those little cans. Well, That's going. Mm -hmm. And then I will add. Now, what they tell you to do in the recipes is get fish heads and boil them for four hours. Didn't you do that? Oh, yeah. No, I can't, <laughs> I can't keep them because I, I eat the fish in. No, no. <laughs> uh, d d you know, to make a fish well, stock. this was the old style of French cooking, the classic, where you followed those instructions and you spent your whole day cooking. Seafood stock. Well, yeah. You can get it Good. at that store over in Mishawaka that sells bagels, donuts, and Swiss cheese. You know the one I mean? I think so. Whole foods. Yeah. Well, and, you, you know, who wants to cook a fish head? Come on. Uh, so, so, anyway. So, I'm going to add fish stock. I'll strain this later to get these veggies out. But I'm adding fish stock. We're making a broth. And into the broth will go, guess what? Fish. Well, isn't that creative? All right. We are starting. We're, we're kind of just at the beginning of our, our dishes. And I am going to cook that a little bit longer. Then I'm going to start a, a mushroom sauce, and you're going to continue. You're making your little amuse-bouche. Ma making the amuse-bouche. And right. so we're going to take a little break here, gather some more ingredients. And in the meantime, we want to show you some pictures of Dora Mar, Marie Therese, Francois Gillot, whenever, whatever you can find about the women of Picasso, right? You can't see Odine. She doesn't exist. No, she doesn't. And I love the name Odine. It means a little wave. And, uh, of course, living near the Mediterranean. So we'll take a little break. We'll be right back. and I are back. I've cooked my chicken. It's going in the 200 degree oven to stay warm. What are you doing? I have finished the amuse-bouche, put a little caviar on top, and the stock is about ready. And what I'm going to do now is strain it, because I don't want all those heavy vegetables in there. So you strain. Strain the stock. I'm adding some more olive oil to the pan, and I'm going to put in mushrooms and cook them down. All right, what happens next, Tuck? Then I will put the, a, a few extra fun ingredients in this stock. And then I will do something that every cook should do with every dish. And that is say nuts to it and go to a restaurant. No. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you're in France, to me it makes sense. It really does. I'm putting in some garlic, uh, minced garlic and chopped mushroom. We're going to cook that with, and then we'll add butter. We've got some plum tomatoes to add. I've got a little bit of cornstarch in water here. This is never called for in the recipe, but it makes it nice. And I got one of these little twirly things from Ikea, which Those mixes it up really nicely. Yeah. You can do a lot with that a little gizmo. Oh, they're wonderful. Wonderful gizmo. Yeah. Yes. That's the pearl of gizmo. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I and do. And then I'm going to put in, whoo, if I can get the thing open. I've had trouble opening things on this show. Yeah. A little bit, a few strands of saffron and you know back in the day you, there was a certain way of cooking and depending on where you were uh, Jacques Pepin became a chef but he had to train in France and you could not do anything unless it had been written down and had been done that way for centuries 
and he came to America and he really blossomed. He became famous in America. It was a little more experimental at the time. Uh, and I'm using his recipe today and the author consulted with him for this chicken dish that I'm doing. Uh, and we'll call it, it's a poulet provençal. And I'm going to put some tomatoes in here. We're gonna let that cook down. I am not mincing, but I'm chopping the tomatoes. And uh, I'll add uh, some uh, basil. Anyway, just stay with us. We got a lot going on. What's happening now well, with what you? What I'm doing is I'm, I'm getting the broth right, and I'm now gonna do it something that every cook must always do, and that is taste it. I'm gonna taste it. And you do, you want to oh, check yeah. the seasoning, don't you? Absolutely, check Everything. the seasoning. I'm going to season a bit more with some sel over here. That's French for salt, you know. <laughs> sel right. et poivre, that's salt and pepper. You know, and I'm supposed to be seeding these tomatoes and uh, chopping them. And, you know, there there's a lot of white in the tomato. And I feel, okay, take out the white and the seeds. But really, it's food. And I, doesn't bother me there are tomato seeds in a dish. What's this? Petite. Petite diced tomatoes. Oh, they're well. just as good as that, and they're easy. Well, I use them all the time. I all use right. them at home, but when I'm here, I've got to do some action. i got to cut or something, you know, chop. Anyway, here we go. I have shrimp with the tails on, which I take off. I don't like tails on shrimp. So you take them off, you do, You never serve them so the people take the tails off, no. right? I can't see any reason to leave them on. It just means you got a, a dish there. Suddenly you got to get your hands down in your food and get all messy and use napkins. Ridiculous. There you go. A then new, I'm going to add... A new touch, a new lesson. Fish. I have here skinned and chopped up into chunks salmon and walleye pike, which I pick up at Martin. That I goes see. in the dish. And then right. I have, lastly, moule, which are leaking all over the place, but so what? Well, let me take that paper and take it to the sink. We don't want it to leak on the floor and all that. I think I got them all. Whoa. There Here we go. go. I'm going to use this and mop that up. Uh, so, right. now we're, um, we're in New York, Rochelle, and of course, Odine, and Luke are married. The Mafia, they have a French restaurant in New Rochelle. The mob, they're very successful. So the mob, mob um, comes in and they want to pay off every, yeah. every week. Uh, what do you call it? Protection racket. Yeah, and it's really scary. They actually, well, Undine ha has a daughter. Named Julia. Julie, yes. Julie, and that is Picasso's daughter. And she keeps talking about the dark eyes. But nobody talks about this or reveals it to the very last page of mm -hmm. the book. And nobody knows. The we granddaughter, know. We, the know. we know it. The gr and then there's a granddaughter named Celine. Celine. And she, she doesn't cook. She's a makeup artist for mm -hmm. movies. Yeah. And she goes to the Confis Festival and makes up all the actresses. But and she all of gets it. the feeling that there's a painting out there worth a whole ton of money that should be hers. Yes. I'm and glad so you brought that to, up. She goes to France to look for it. She takes a, sh a cooking course from a man named, I would pronounce it Gil, G-I-L. He's English. He's very English. Stuffy, very straightforward. You must do it my way. Or there's no other way to do it at all. Yeah. One of those. <laughs> well, you know, he, he has a, it's called a moss. He has bought yeah. this moss. Which and is a big kind it, of farm. It's like a farm. And he's having it redone. They're going to have rent out the rooms. He's going to be cooking there. And he's running short on money, and he oh, gets he's got threatened after him for, money, yeah. for him too. And and all, between all of this, the family wants to know where this painting is that Picasso painted of Ondine probably 50 years before. Mm -hmm. And uh, and we think it could be somewhere in the mosque. Oh, she good. finds out. Good, good. I poured you a glass of Provence oh. Rosé which All is right. the wine of that region, and which is recommended on every bouillabaisse recipe, uh, mess recipe. This is what you drink with it. I must wipe my hands. There, thank you. To verb a noun, you pair it with it. Here, we pair it. Voila. All it right. pairs well. Oh, that's light and nice. 
I've rose got Rosé is interesting because for a long time you couldn't even get it. It was just so out of fashion. Now wine stores have huge displays of rosé. Everybody's buying rosé these days. I've always liked it. Well, here we go. Tomatoes are in. Mushrooms are cooked. I'm going to be adding... Uh, are we having dinner for two or four? Oh, I don't know. Well, I don't know. I got uh, enough here. We could have it for two. I don't know. I could, whatever we have here. I See, think my, mine my, is for eight, but it doesn't matter. I'm my adding, bouillabaisse is about done. Well, I'm adding my black olives, and then I'm going to add basil. I'm going to tear it up a little bit, and mm. I'm going to add about a tablespoon. Here, you're standing there. You shall also serve. Please open that for me. Voila. And thank you. Of course, these should be drained, and I'll yeah. drain it quickly. We have a tablespoon of capers, and that's a I very French. I do, too. So, and then I'm going to add two-thirds a cup of these little cherry tomatoes. You can see that there's a lot of ingredients that go in here. And guess what I have to add? What? The chicken. <laughs> and we're going to let that. this yeah. cook. I hope they get a good picture of this. Uh, and then at the end, I'm going to add pine nuts that have been browned in butter and parsley and then I'll add some broccoli and potatoes and let's hope I can pick this up without it being too hot. No, it'll be fine. All right, the chicken goes in here. Now I've done this another way too. I don't always separate this. I put them all in at once. It just depends on the ingredients. So we'll put the lid on, let some of these wonderful aromas soak Ooh. in here. Wow. Mm, that is so good. I put a little bit of hot pepper flakes in. I put in some chervil, uh, uh, saffron, and I... Quite secret. I use a little bit of food coloring. To just <gasps> juice it up orange. <gasps> I'm and horrified. I've, I know you are. And I've also put in uh, cornstarch to thicken it a little bit. All of that makes it really yummy. Boy, we're getting this together. We're going to do the final little touches, yeah. chop up some bread, and we're going to invite you to the table. I'm and going to serve some. Should we call it paradis, our own paradis? It's our, our own, own paradis. paradis. We have our own little paradise right here in South Bend, Indiana. All right, so in the meantime, I want you to take a look at the menu. It's going to be right up on the screen, and we'll be right back. And Tuck Langland has joined me today, and we are cooking for Picasso, aren't we? Absolutely. And you He's made... He's the man. Tell us what you made that is so Well, we started with an amuse-bouche, which is something you eat before a meal. Mmm. Mm. Little French bread, mm. mayo, smoked salmon, and car caviar. Perfect. Then I have made a bouillabaisse, which right. is a fish soup, particular to the south of France, where the book takes place. Wonderful. And we're drinking a rosé from well, Provence mm. in a sexy bottle, you know. Yes. Woo. And uh, this and is all very, very Provence. It's uh, all Provence. very French, isn't it? Very Provencal. southern France. And then I have the poulet Provençal. I've added some little fingerling potatoes and broccoli. They could be on a side dish, but more color. We're having a double cream <coughs> brie with grapes. Mm -hmm. Some more French bread. And I like the concept. I'm gonna uh, take some soup. There were some things in the mm. book, like the that vocabulary, I thought was kind of like a knot of the time, but it was a fun book. Well, I think one thing about the book is it jumps back and forth in time. You've got Ondine in the 1936 period, yeah. and then you've got her granddaughter Celine in the in the 2014 era. She's yeah. looking back. She's so you doing have a detective to you job. have to focus. You really do. You can't because mm -hmm. you can get all mixed up. You start out with Ondine, then we go to Julie, and then we go to Celine, and then we f discover the painting is found, and the lawyer has it. They sell it to a billionaire, and it's going to go into mm -hmm. the Louvre when everything is. Do you like that? That's right. You need a napkin, <laughs> Monsieur. I do need a napkin, but I'll, I'll be all right. All right, he'll be all right. I'm all right. And anyway, I'm just I, eating some soup. I love the concept. He's been waiting for this soup, so he is tasting it. What do you think? How did the chef do? I think do? it's fine. Good. I think the chef was good. 
Uh, <coughs> okay. This is the first thing she served Picasso. Okay. That was what he wanted right away. So I want to thank you for joining us today. And we had a great time. We've been in the south of France. We've been with Tuck Langland. Thank you for coming again. I love coming here. I love it. I well, know. we get together a lot. Yes, we, we do. We share a lot of food, a lot of laughs. Uh-huh, all and, of that. And, oh, we've had a lot of fun together. And yep. we've traveled together. <laughs> yes. Mm -hmm. And so... She never goes anywhere, you know. <laughs> so, <laughs> you name it, she's been there. <laughs> for joining us. Thank you, Tuck. And we'll see you next time. Good food, good friends, good travels, good books. Make for a great life. I tell you, a great life. You bet it does. <laughs> I tell you, yeah. Okay. Couldn't be you, better. See Couldn't you next be time. Bye-bye. This WNIT local production has been made possible in part by viewers like you. Thank you. Dinner and a Book is supported by the Rex and Alice A. Martin Foundation of Elkhart, celebrating the spirit of Alice Martin and her love of good food and good friends.